Hi, my name is Dylan. I'm with the Department of Economics at Arizona State University with their tutoring center. Today I'm going to be going over monotonicity. As a reminder, today we're going to be using material that involves derivatives. If you need any help with derivatives, we have another video on that material. Just another reminder, uh, different professors will have different methods and different definitions. So make sure to ask your professor about everything related to this video in monotonicity. To get started, I'm going to have you look at a simple two input graph. So when we're talking about bundles, it's tempting to say, let's look at A and B. And when I ask you which one is pre preferable, it's tempting to say B because it has more of good one and good two. And a lot of the times you'd be right, but it's not something that we can assume. And so today we're going to talk about monotonicity, especially how to prove that we have monotonicity. We're going to start with why is monotonicity useful to us? Well, for one thing, it allow us to make direct comparisons like this. If we have monotonicity, we can definitely say that B is better than A. If we don't have monotonicity, then we can't prove that. It also helps us decide what kind of optimization we're going to be doing. Because if we have monotonicity, we have to use a constraint, so we'll be using the Lagrange. Or if we don't have monotonicity, we have to use the uh, we have to use substitution method. So let's first look at how we're going to prove it. So the proof for monotonicity is pretty simple. It's if we have a utility function, the first derivative of the utility function in terms of x1 and the utility function in terms of x2 have to always be positive. So let's start with one function. We're going to start with the utility function is the natural log of x1 plus the natural log of x2. So what we want to prove is that both the first order conditions are always positive. So let's go ahead and take those first order conditions. First I have du dx1 and then I have du dx2. So if we go term by term, I see I have a natural log of x, so that's going to be 1 over x1. For the second part, what I notice is that x1 actually does not appear in this term, so this is going to be a constant and it's going to drop out. So that's just going to be 0. And then I have this one, the du dx2. The x1's constant, so this first term is going to drop. The second term is going to be 1 over x2. Now what we want to make sure is that these are both always positive. So what I know about my x1 and my x2 is that because I'm always in the first quadrant, they have to be positive. So a positive divided by a positive is always positive. Same thing here. So what we've proven here is that in the first quadrant, both these derivatives are always greater than zero. And what that means is that we have monotonicity, meaning that the utility is always increasing when we increase our amount. This won't always be the case. Sometimes we're going to have functions that don't exhibit monotonicity. For example, we're going to look at another function. This function is going to be a polynomial. So it's u equals x1 minus 2x1 squared plus 3x2 minus 4x2 squared. Let's go ahead and take the first order conditions of these to see if it's mon monotonic. So I have my du dx1, derivative of this is 1, bring the 2 down, minus 4x1. For x2, I'm going to have a 3 minus 8x2. So what I see here is that these values won't always be positive because once my x1 gets high or my x2 gets higher, we'll, we'll start to see negative values for a du dx1 and du dx2. So we actually don't have monotonicity in this case. In this case, we aren't going to be using any constraints to solve the optimization problem. Instead, we're going to be using just plain substitution. Lastly, what does it mean and why is it useful us when we have monotonicity? Well, one of the main usefulnesses of it is that when we have monotonicity, we can prove that in a but with a budget constraint, an optimization problem, we're going to be spending all of our money. So what that means, if we have a budget set, is that our optimal point is always going to be on the budget line. This allows us to use the Lagrange, where otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this with that method. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you have any other questions, we do have other videos, and please come into the Tutoring Center at ASU. Thank you.